Today we're going through 10 tough pocket knives. And when I say tough, what I mean is that they are slightly more robust than a light duty pocket knife. So you can possibly be a little bit tougher on them. So starting it off, we have the Chavez Redencion 229 in or with the kickstop in a chisel grind and a symmetrical grind. And I did not say asymmetrical. I said symmetrical. So this is a symmetrical grind and then this is a, um, a chisel grind. So some people don't like chisel grinds because of one, the way they look, they kind of throws them off because the one side looks different than the other side and they don't look like they're centered. They look like they're off, even though that is centered. Um, and then you know, it's just, it's just most usually the reasons why people don't like them is just a looks thing. And I've, I understand because I used to be kind of the same way. I used to think like it kind of looked ugly. So I didn't really, you know, care for them until I started using them. Then I realized like, oh, oh, okay. This is why people love them. So you find them on chisels, right? For woodworking, as far as chisel grinds, chisels for woodworking. Then you also find them in with chefs, like sushi chefs and just chefs in general, because it allows for super thin slices. And you, because it has one flat side, it allows you to cut straight down while the food on this side can peel, you know, to the side. So that is beneficial to chefs. And like I said, very, very sharp and very, very slicey, which is another reason why people love them is because of the high levels of sharpness that they can obtain. Now I did this edge bevel right here. I cut this in, it did not come like this, it was like this. It did take me a while to sharpen this. We'll talk about that here in a second. We won't go too deep into it. But for tactical reasons, people like um, chisel grinds because it allows them to one, sharpen their knife faster, easier to sharpen, and it's easier to hone and strop in the field. You only have to worry about one side. You don't have to worry about doing both sides. You basically just deburr on this side. So you know, much easier half the time. Another thing is, is the levels of sharpness that they can get to because of the single-sided bevel, you know, you, you can um, make them a little bit larger on one side without sacrificing toughness. So you can lower back your edge angle and it still preserves some toughness. But all in all, even with a regular edge bevel, they have, they seem to have just more higher levels of sharpness. And when you lower back your edge angle like this, you get sharpness that some people would, would not want because it's so dangerously sharp that I, and you guys have left me comments saying this, that I don't want a knife that sharp because I, I'm scared what will happen if I, if I make a mistake because it is like that. So, you know, just something to be, be aware of this level of sharpness is, is absolutely off the charts. So a lot of people love that, like myself. I personally love high levels of sharpness. Also, the cutting. It's going to cut a little bit better as far as one um, right or left-handed bias. So this one would be a right-handed knife because the, chisel, the flat side's on this side. But if it was the opposite, it would be a left-handed knife. So there is that. Now, personally, for regular EDC use, you really don't see too much of a difference. But when you talk about cutting through wood or food, things like that, then you do. But anyways, um, high levels of sharpness, great cutting performance, and you're gonna get a little bit better edge retention because, you know, the thinner geometry, because, you know, it doesn't have the two sides, it's one side flat. So it allows it to be a little bit thinner behind the edge. Now, as far as sharpening this, yes, this took a while. I did make one huge mistake. I allowed my stone to go over the tip and I did chip the tip off at the worst possible time. I was on my first stone when the burr was the biggest and I was about to re I was about to remove the burr and I allowed my stone to go over the tip and it, it rounded it over. So the mistake I made was when I went across the stone like this, uh, the stone went too far and it went like that. So it rolled over and it knocked my tip off. Now, I constantly tell you guys to be careful for that. Never let the stone go past the middle, or sorry, never let the tip go past the middle of the stone. Well, I was rushing because I was working so hard. This took a long time to, to set this bevel back that far. So, and then I wound up, you know, not being patient enough and allowed that stone to go over the tip. So it backfired. That's going to take a lot of steel to get out. So I'm just going to have to swallow it um, until the future.
that's going to take a, a bit of sharpening to get rid of. However, it's still sharp. It's still pokey. It's still fine. But my goodness, is this thing sharp? This thing, I've been at a 23. So you guys probably are looking at this like, man, that must be like a seven degree edge bevel. No, this is 23.5 degrees, 24 degrees, and this is 20 degrees. So think about that. It's not very low. It's just this is very robust up, up here. This is very thick up here in this section. This is a hollow grind in this section. But anyways, um, the level of sharpness that this thing has acquired now that I put this edge on there is just absolutely insane. The bite is just crazy. Um, <laughs> this cut is actually from sharpening it. When I was sharpening it, it still had a burr on it, and I just barely tapped the, the edge and it got me good. So, you know, another cut for the week has not been my week, I'll be honest, as far as cuts go. Anyways, so let's check out the next one, man. We got a lot to get through. I, I spent a little bit more time on that one than I probably should have. So the next one is the new Kirby Lambert Rain. And now we have this version, which is the same thing as the, the, the pink version which was a limited edition Valentine's Day one. Um, I don't think you can get these any more beautiful satin finish. Um, then this one has a stonewashed finish. Beautiful stonewashed finish, by the way. It's not quite the same stonewashed as the original one, uh, but it's still really, really nice. Titanium bolster lock. Nice. You can see how thick that bolster lock is. Um, kind of like the Chavez, just nice, thick, and robust scales. Then we have this gorgeous fat carbon fiber with the copper and the blues. I freaking dig this stuff. I don't have any stuff like this in my collection. This is the first time I've ever had anything like this, and I like it a lot, like a lot, like a lot. Um, it's a tough choice if I had to pick between these two because the exclusiveness of this one makes me love it. You know, you don't see the pink and the blue with the, you know, the all pink. And, you know, you really don't see knives like this too often with this type of configuration. And I love the satin finish. Love it. Very robust drop point blade with a deep hollow grind with a deep satin. And you can see how robust this blade is. This tip is going to be a tip. You're not going to have to worry about breaking. Similar to like the Chavez, you know. Um, very thick geometry as far as the spine goes, but it gets down nice and thin. Then the ergos are just hand melting. They're really, really well done. This thing is going to slice like a beast because of the ergonomics mixed with the hollow grind. The thumb stud action is absolutely insane. I love, love, love the thumb stud action on this thing. Very, very smooth. These are available right now. If you want to get one, um, I highly recommend this knife. It's under $300, and it's a Riet-made Riet knife, an S90V, with the materials you see. So, to me, this totally feels like a $300, this totally feels like a $350 knife. So, in my opinion, I think it's a no-brainer. I, I think that this thing is amazing, and I think most people, you know, that, that buy knives and spend money on knives would agree that considering other things you see on the market, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. Um, it is exclusive to Caviso. I will link it down in the description if you're interested in looking at the other versions because there is more versions. I forget. I should have said that. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of different versions, so I probably already showed you on the screen. Next. Um... You know what? Speaking about the chisel grinds really quick, I'm not going to bring this one up. This isn't one of the uh, knives for the video, but you can also have a single-sided edge bevel. So you notice how this is a symmetrical grind, but it has a single-sided edge bevel. So that's another way to kind of have the same thing as the chisel grind. It's not going to be as sharp as the chisel, but it is very, very sharp. It allows you to have low angle edges on one side, faster sharpening, and you know, like I said, high levels of sharpness and good cutting performance for a robust blade. These are known for tactical... Emerson is known for making tactical knives. Next, the Migaron Mira. I think that's the name of it, the Mira. This thing is crazy robust. Look at this blade. I mean, it is thick, 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 thick. So it's not gonna be the best slicer. However, it actually cuts pretty good. You have such good ergonomics around this titanium frame lock. Look at this titanium frame lock. Beautiful micro milling, um, nice large hardware. Big, thick, robust lock bar. Nice clip. Nice, big, thick, robust clip and backspacer. Look at that backspacer. Full titanium backspacer. Great access to the lock bar. Stupid smooth on the drop. 
You can easily reverse flick it. This is a great reverse flicking knife because the hole just lands in the perfect spot and they tune the detent so nicely. This is a heavy blade. So anytime you have a heavy blade, it's going to pop out of the handle fairly easily. So the detent man, they did a great job on tuning it for the flipper tab and the thumb or reverse flick. And it has a nice sound in my opinion. Anyways, um, S90V blade, or sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, M390. M390 blade with a satin finish, and then the handle, like I said, very ergonomic. You can choke up very nicely. This is a little bit more on the thicker side, so you might or might not want to put a lower angle edge on it. It will hold the toughness, so you know you can bring out some more sharpness out of it and make it a little bit better cutter. Um... The Manix, really quick, I just want to bring this up because the OG scales did drop. They're going to take about two or three weeks for them to fulfill. So if you want to get some aluminum scales for your Manix lightweight, then check out the link down in the description to OG, Original Goat. I have a 15% discount code where you can save some money and get yourself an order in because I'm pretty sure it's first come, first serve. And, you know, a lot of people probably have been buying them. So get in line and get yourself some OG skills. Like I said, I think they say about two, three weeks to fulfill the order. Um, personally, for me, this is one of my favorite tough pocket knives, especially the XL because it's bigger. So it does feel a little bit tougher. feels like you could be a little bit tougher on it. The ball lock, in my opinion, is a great lock. I love the fidget factor. Um, it's a nice solid lockup. You can be a little bit tougher on it in some cases. Um, and the lightweight, man, whew, this thing is my favorite lightweight of all time right now. This one's in Rex 45. So this is a GP Knives exclusive. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. USA made. Um, it's 100% USA made. Amazing heat treatment on this Rex 45. My goodness, does it does it sharpen up like a, like an? Uh, 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 I want to cuss. It sharpens up like that. Uh, very, very sharp. And it holds on to it great. And then these lightweight FRN scales. I don't even like FRN, but I freaking love this stuff. I have multiple of them. So that's another reason why I want to get aluminum scales. Because while I don't like FRN, that's why I want aluminum. I love the FRN on this. It, it's such a light duty knife that that's, feels so tough and just feels so useful um, that, you know, it just feels like a knife you can toss around a little bit, but, you know, it's so lightweight, you can take it anywhere. And, and yeah, I freaking love the Manix. The Manix uh, XL is quite a bit bigger in every dimension, but something to think about. They are both available. And then you can also get this in different uh, steels and different handle materials and so on. Next, speaking about original GOAT, you got the AD10. This is the lightweight, and the lightweight comes in at a, a phenomenal price. This is one of the toughest pocket knives you can get on the planet. One of the toughest. Um, like, if you were going to make a chart of, like, the top 10, top 5, this would definitely probably be on the list, especially for its size. It has a very thick, robust grind. Look at this blade. You're not going to break this tip. You're not going to break the blade. You'd have to do insane things that knives are not made for, and even if you do that, you're probably still not going to break it. Um, this one has Aus 10, and it has Original Goat titanium scales, which absolutely make this thing just off the charts awesome. Like, <laughs> I I love this knife without it, like with the FRN. So the lightweight comes with FRN. The original one comes with a G10. So the FRN one is a bit lighter. But when you throw these titanium scales on there, it may, like it already feels a, a, like extra robust. It feels like a knife that's just virtually indestructible because it is. Throwing the titanium scales on it, it it's... <sighs> It's like adding steroids to to an already uh, high testosterone individual. Anyways, um, amazing, amazing knife. I freaking love it. I don't even mind the triad lock. I'm not a big back lock fan, but the triad lock, because of the locking mechanism, because of that thwack when it locks up, just knowing how strong it is. And they put it in the center, so it's pretty easy to use and operate one-handed, which I do appreciate. These are knives you can actually, you know, use outdoors and actually hard use. So this would be considered a hard use knife. And with the titanium scales, my goodness. Now, next, 
the Spyderco Shaman. Spyderco Shaman, man, I freaking love this thing. This is, it's not my favorite Spyderco, but it is a great, great, tougher, so, tougher spider co because some spider co's or a lot of spider co's i should say have somewhat of a dainty tip because they like to have great utility cuts which i appreciate and i love that i want that probably more than even robust knives this one allows you to still get great utility cuts and great slicing because it has a full flat grind but it allows it to be just a little bit more robust the tip is a little bit more robust so it's a little bit tougher and then it has the compression lock which is a nice strong solid locking system that works very well it's basically like a reverse liner lock that adds the stop pin in place which does allow it to be a bit stronger than if it did not so the line the liner basically goes in between the stop pin and the tang of the blade making it very easy to disengage and use one-handed you can get an, um, a CME from OCD for EDC to put back here on some of your compression locks if you want to check those out on OCD for EDC. It's just basically like a little button you can glue there. You don't have to take the knife apart or anything. But anyways, mine has some aftermarket red micarta scales, uh, but just the way these things come with the the you know the the stock scales, the G10 scales. These are robust hand filling knives that feel like a, a super tough knife that not only can you be more robust on or be a little bit tougher on but you can also use it as a regular everyday slicer so while it's tough it's not off the charts where it's going to be something obnoxious this is a great knife that anybody can carry somewhat of a tactical-ish knife just like the rest of these knives all these knives have pretty much been tactical knives um this one's an s30v but there is other versions i have a nice low angle convex edge on mine and I did that on purpose, preserve some toughness, and, and um, add a lot more sliciness to it. Next, the Quiet Carry Drift LC. This is the one in LC200N. Now, I don't think a lot of people would have considered this or would have thought that I'd put this on the list. But I am because look at how thick the lock bar is. The lock bar is more on the robust side. The blade geometry on this one is, is while it's very slicey, and I do like the geometry. It's not as thin as some of their other knives. They have a lot of knives that are just absolutely super, super thin that are mega slicers that I think most people would, would appreciate. So this one has LC200N steel, which is a great steel, very, very corrosion resistant. Um, not the highest edge retention, but it has good edge retention, plenty of toughness. And then we have a titanium frame lock with a titanium mill pocket clip, one of my favorite pocket clips ever, and a G10 show side that's super grippy. This thing is very grippy, very ergonomic. You feel like you can be a little bit tougher on it. I wouldn't say you're gonna hard use it, but you know, it's something that, uh, you know, when you feel that lock up, uh, Quiet Carry does a good job with that. Good access to the lock bar. Very smooth action on ceramic caged bearings. And, you know, it's just a super solid knife that's a little bit on the larger side. There's also the Quiet Carry Waypoint. Now, this is the large waypoint. Now, I'm bringing this one up. To me, this is a great example of an EDC tactical knife. Kind of like some of the other ones we had on the list. This one is just, it's a straightforward knife, which I love. I love the straightforwardness of it. it it's very sim simple in the design. It's something that everybody recognizes as a knife. It has a clip point blade. Some people would call it a reverse or a uh, reverse tanto, which I don't really believe in reverse tantos unless if this is sharpened up here, which it's not. But it has a thicker blade than the original Quiet Carry Waypoint, which is smaller and much, much, much thinner. This one has a nice deep hollow grind still, but it adds thicker blade stock with thicker scales with thick titanium liners. It does have a steel lock bar insert and it is riding on washers. The grippiness of the G10 makes it to where it's not going to go anywhere in your hand. You do have a spot right there to protect you from sliding up the blade. And while this is not a hard use knife in any way, shape, or form, you know, I wouldn't go out batoning with this thing or anything like that. This is something I definitely feel very comfortable with using a little bit tougher. Um, while I probably wouldn't be prying with the tip or anything because it does have a hollow grind, even though some of the knives on this list you absolutely could, even though they have a hollow grind, this one's a little bit more on the slice your side so that's also going to benefit you in the field with cutting performance and, and just use in general great access to the lock bar it is nice and smooth and it breaks in very very nicely 
Now, the clip is a uh, deep carry clip, and you see how they put it on a nice smooth surface, so it's nice and smooth in and out of the pocket, and it's very easy to carry. It has this, this um, profile where the blade is almost all the way inside the handle, making it to where you can slip it in your pocket, and you can still use your pocket. You can still put your hand in and out of the pocket without worry of something being in the way. Magna Cut Steel. And Magna Cut Steel, we already know all about Magna Cut. Um, if you don't, I have many videos talking about it. Beautiful plunge grind and sharpening choil. So it has a tough steel with great edge retention, great corrosion resistance, um, and, you know, just an overall super solid build that, uh, you know, your quiet carry usually s slips into the um, the, slicey, uh, the slicey EDC category. And this one kind of puts them a little bit more into the tougher category as far as everyday carry goes. I'm not saying that these are camping knives or, or outdoors knives. I'm saying for everyday carry purposes. Anyways, there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.